today I'm at the Sydney Caravan Show and we're going to have a look at what Teardrops and Square Drop campers they have here. So stay tuned. The Sydney Caravan Show. One word to describe this place and it's huge. And there's something there for everyone. It's such a good day out. I enjoy it muchly and look forward to it every year. Seeing new products, how things are put together. It's, it's the highlight of my RV year with regards to exhibitions. It's just full of everything, to be honest. Uh, whether you want a tent, a rooftop camper, accessories for your four-wheel drive or caravan, you're looking for any sort of camper, caravan, motorhome. And the caravan industry, it just blows my mind how large it is when you see all of those caravans on display, especially the hybrid and the full-size caravan market. It must be really, really difficult to nut it down to what you are going to buy when you're faced with all of these vans. But to be able to compare everything against each other in the one place is awesome. Um, I picked up a 300 watt solar blanket uh, that I've ordered uh, from iTech World and I'm looking forward to that coming. I did get it slightly cheaper because it was on a show price and you can generally get these things when you go to these places. With regards to teardrops and square drops, much more of them this year than ever before. Normally you might get, you know, one or two of them, but this year there were multiple manufacturers selling uh, completely different setups to each other, which was really good to see at different price points. So if you're a purchaser, you could actually go and, and compare a few different teardrops or square drops. Of course, the smaller manufacturers that sometimes may put out a, a higher quality product than the, the larger manufacturers, they weren't there because they can't afford the stands. But to be able to go and compare units and look at them and decide if that type of thing is for you is absolutely superb. Today, we're gonna to run over the teardrops and square drops that were there, do a rough overview of them so you can get the show experience in this little niche condensed and online. Smidge Campers are a division of Sun Camper Motorhomes in Sydney. They had on display an on-road teardrop and an off-road square drop camper, both available in three different trim levels. The square drop on display was their top of the line model and had a retail price of $42,000. Options fitted to the display model were two high quality side windows for $2,000, a roof rack for $375, a 270 degree awning for $1,100 and a rooftop tent for $3,300, giving a drive away price for the complete unit on display as $48,775. I do like how Smidge get a balance of chassis strength while still keeping an eye on weight. Tar weight of the square drop is 850 kilos, ball weight is 90 with a GVM of 1200 kilos. Bedding is queen size and includes a high density foam mattress that can fold up to a lounge. Personally, I'm not a fan of the fold up lounge option. Unless you're using sleeping bags, it means you have to unmake the bed, then store the bedding somewhere. For us, we prefer the comfort of a good pillow top in a spring mattress and bedding as per home for that hotel experience in the wilderness, but each to their own. Electronics are a standard 120 amp AGM battery with a 170 amp solar panel. The camper in question had CBE electronics, which appears to be an Italian brand popular in European manufactured motorhomes. The camper also has 240 volt shore power connected with two power points. There was no inverter in the show camper. Chassis wise, the show camper had a galvanized chassis with eye to eye leaf springs, a 50 millimeter ball arc fully articulated coupling and mechanical disc brakes. My personal opinion is that on an off-road model costing $45,000, I'd expect more than a 50 millimeter ball coupling, no matter how good it is. For similar outlay, you can get a far superior coupling that is now fairly standard within the camper industry, e.g. Cruisemaster DO35. With the mechanical brakes, I'd much prefer to see electric drum brakes. I find mechanical discs okay for load carrying trailers, but fairly agricultural for a camper trailer, especially if you are towing with a lighter weight vehicle. The ability to independently brake the trailer whilst driving is a massive safety aspect even when dealing with lightweight teardrops and square drops. The galley has reasonable bench space. I do question the inbuilt sink in the centre of the bench dividing the prep area. It's my preference for sinks to be situated to one side of the bench 
else a collapsible, removable version. The latter also safeguards against potential water leaks, causing issues at a later date. This camper featured an 80 litre water tank, 55 litre fridge freezer, along with a two burner gas stove with grill. Smidge cabin interiors are a very nice place to spend time in. With the use of European birch faced plywood and Smidge's cabinetry, it's one of the highlights of the camper. Overall, a well built, nicely finished camper with a lovely cabin feel. The on road teardrop on display had no extras and had a driveway price of 31,000. Tar weight on the teardrop is 560 kilos, ball weight is 50 kilos, with a GVM of 1,000 kilos. Bedding was queen width with double length, again, a high density foam mattress that can fold up to a lounge. A standard 120 amp AGM battery with a 100 amp solar panel. Chassis wise, the show camper had a painted chassis with slipper loof springs, a 50 millimeter ball coupling, and mechanical disc brakes. My personal opinion is that even on an on road version, slipper springs belong on a box trailer, not a camper. The price difference between the options is minimal. I'm still not keen on a 50 millimeter ball coupling, even on an on road version. Mechanical brakes again, and you've already heard my thoughts on these, especially with the Bluetooth brake controllers available, not requiring vehicle controller wiring. Again, the interior and cabinetry is welcoming, looks apart and well constructed. The galley presents well, although it's leaned to the bench with the cooker and fridge both slid out, highlights the issues of packaging in a small camper. This camper also has a central sink as per the square drop with an 80 litre water tank. You'd be very happy with one of these and I'm sure it would give many, many years of hassle free use. South African manufactured Vagabond campers come in three different equipment levels. Prices range from the base model Vagabond Possum at $30,000 to $42,500 for the Vagabond Brumby. Vagabond campers are imported locally by Cruzy Campers. Weights are a worry. The campers are nice and light at a quoted 580 kilograms tar. However, this is the same tar weight across all models and specifications. If the base model is missing the awning, water tank, fridge, charging system, how could the two models with these options weigh the same? So something to look at. GVM is 750 kilos for the base model. The other two models are quoting 1,050 kilos. Interesting point is that the manufacturer quotes the axle rating at 1.5 tonne. I really like the fiberglass shell of these campers. It'll last forever and best of all the flexible sealants used in most camper manufacturing just aren't there. As such, ownership should be worry free with regards to recorking seams to prevent water ingress these are typical South African campers, with none of the drawers and cabinetry we tend to expect in traditional caravans. Instead, we have storage modules moulded into the shell with canvas flaps that zip open and are held on with Velcro. This means they are removable for replacement or washing. I like it. Storage within the cabin is massive. One downside is that the galley hatch when open doesn't give as much rain protection as other campers. The galvanised chassis has leaf spring suspension and unfortunately these are slipper springs. I just don't get manufacturers marketing off-road campers at these prices without an eye-to-eye -eye main leaf spring. It's really nickel and diming the market. Brakes are dependent on model. You either get no brakes on the base 750 kilogram version, else mechanical brakes. One thing I do notice on their website is that you can option electric brakes which is a good thing. The major issue I see with this camper is the drawbar length. It's typical South African manufacturer short. And not only is it short, it comes with the typical South African 50 millimeter rotational ball coupling that's used in a lot of the European countries. This isn't easily fixable and it's something that if the importer could sort, they'd be on a winner in this market. For what it's worth, Conqueror campers had the same issue when first importing their campers from South Africa. I notice they now offer a longer draw bar with a DO35 hitch. The galley is interesting. It has a cutting board, sink and refrigerator, which is a Snowmaster. So apart from the cutting board, 
no real bench space for spreading out your meal preparation. However, I do notice a removable table which gives you an L-shaped kitchen. It works because there are none of the slide outs for refrigerators or cookers. The cooker supplied lives on a removable table to the left hand side of the camper, which keeps the cooking smells out of the camper, but is something else you need to set up when arriving at camp. However, it does look fairly easy to set up. Another item to note is that with the top models, you get a fitted four piece crockery set. The website for the importer lists all available options, along with pricing, which is great. Some of those options are walls for the 270 degree awning, along with filler and draft sheets, which is awesome. Makes me think that if you could get the base Vagabond Possum with electric brakes, you'd have a pretty good base to add your own lithium battery solution, etc. at a reasonable price. Stockman Rover Teardrops are a locally manufactured camper, available in three different equipment levels. Pricing starts at $44,490. The version on display was their top spec model at $67,290 drive away. It's no lightweight at a 1080 kilograms tar with a ball weight of 140 kilos. ATM is 1600 kilos. My only concern here is with that vast storage area just begging to be filled, ball weight could climb substantially. Still, if you have a vehicle with a two ton or more towing capacity, all of this isn't going to be an issue for you. The Stockman Rover Camper features fully independent suspension, DO35 hitch, electric drum brakes and a galvanised chassis. Nothing to complain about here. Electronics on the display model included 240 volt shore power hookup with two power points, 200 amps of lithium battery power with Bluetooth monitoring, 40 amp DC DC charger along with 200 watts of solar. The display camper had no inverter fitted. The cavernous line storage box on the front of the camper is part of the camper's design aesthetic and is something other manufacturers could learn from. The cabin has two extra large doors giving easy access to a luxurious well-finished cabin. Bedding is a queen size inner sprung mattress and there is lots of storage. The top of the line model comes with a rooftop air conditioner and side awning. The galley has easy clean stainless bench tops, a small sink to one side with a 120 litre water tank and gas hot water system with a shower tent. An upright 130 litre fridge along with lots of storage. The cooker is on a swing away arm and doesn't intrude on your prep space. Big tick there. The large fiberglass galley hatch also gives lots of shelter to rain if you pull up by the side of the road to make a coffee. This camper is a quality item and if I was shopping for a new teardrop it would be right at the top of the list. In this episode I've been quite opinionated with what I look for if I was to buy a new camper after building and owning a small camper. Uh, I hope that's okay. <laughs> Met a few people at the show and they were looking for new campers and they'd seen me online and the like and I just figured after talking to them um, some experience of building and, and using one of these is not a bad thing on the types of things to look for or what I look for anyway. It may, you may look for different things. Uh, so far we're about 50% of the way through looking at these campers that were at the show. I'm going to leave it there and next episode we'll run through the rest. So I hope you enjoyed that for today guys and we'll see you next time. Bye now.